Want to know if lash lifts are actually safe for your eyes? Keep watching. Aloha everyone, I am Dr. Rupa, ophthalmologist and lover of all things beauty. So on this channel we talk a little bit of eye surgery, eye health, and my favorite, eye makeup trends and whether or not they're actually safe for your eyes or if they're okay. So I was first introduced to lash lifts by one of my staff at the clinic. My optician came in one day and her lashes looked amazing. And you guys know I'm like so obsessed with eyelashes. It's a good thing I'm an eye surgeon. I just, I love eyelashes. Anyway, she came in, her lashes looked fantastic. I thought they were extensions. And then she told me she had gotten a lash perm or a lash lift as it's also called. So I had to figure out what this was about, what do they use, is this something I could do because, you know, I want my lashes to look like that. They looked just very, um, not just curled, but just they looked really defined and it looked like she was wearing mascara. It just looked really great, not clumpy, uh, not overly done the way sometimes I see extensions looking. It just looked awesome. So let's dive deep into the process and the chemicals that they use in lash lifts and whether or not they are dangerous for your eyes. Because ultimately that's what's most important is the safety of your eyes. And I'm gonna start off by saying people that do lash tints and lash lifts and lash perms, and if you're watching this video and you're like, I love it, I'm never gonna change my mind, that's fine. I am not here to change everyone's mind about what you do. What I wanna do is just educate so everybody can make their own decision, but do so armed with the knowledge of what they're walking into. Heck, there are times when I've done extensions and I know that it causes lash loss and it has some serious problems with it, but I loved it. So I went in with open eyes, knowing what I was doing. So, you know, everybody makes their own decisions and I just have to put that caveat in there. But at least let's investigate what lash lifts are all about. So first, the FDA. I know some of you don't trust the FDA, but that's what we got in this country. So right now they say that permanent eyebrow and eyelash dyes have been known to cause serious eye injury. So I did read that on the FDA website. All right, so let's talk about a lash lift. Unfortunately, many of the chemicals that are used in a lash lift are the same as what was used in perming solutions in, in the 80s or even now. I know most people don't call it lash perms and I think that's probably just a way to dissociate themselves from those chemicals because you guys always think of those, I mean, if you're my age, I used to get perms when I was you know 12 years old and come out with those little corkscrew curls, that was awful. You know, when you smell that perming solution, you know it doesn't smell that great. You know it's got a harsh chemical in it. So what's the difference? Is it the same kind of thing? Let's figure it out. So from my research and from watching a lot of videos and from talking to my staff that have done it as well as a cosmetologist here who does it, because honestly, I was really, really close to getting it done until I started investigating. Basically what they do is they use a silicon pad and they adhere it to your eyelid and then they use a glue and they brush your lashes up. So they're trying to move them outside of the ocular space so that your lashes are on you know, this silicone pad. Once they're on the silicone pad, the perm solution is applied. I read on one website, I'm gonna look at this, it said organic compounds, thioglycolic acid. So do you know what organic means? Now we talk about it as being healthful and close to nature, but Literally in organic chemistry, it, it means that there's a carbon in it, in which case for chemical compounds, most of them have carbon in it. So if you're looking at a chemical structure of something, which they're talking about thioglycolic acid, it has carbon in it. It doesn't mean it's close to nature exactly. So you gotta be careful because sometimes people will, will say things and uh, it's not, it's, it is true, but not uh, according to the spirit of the law, right? So anyway, getting back, thioglycolic acid, the perming solution, breaks the disulfide bonds, just like it broke the disulfide bonds in your hair when you were getting a perm in your hair. It's doing the exact same thing on your eyelashes. It's breaking the disulfide bonds, which are what keep the lashes in the orientation and with the structure that they naturally have. So this aesthetician will coat the perming solution on, they leave it on for a period of time, typically about 10 minutes, then they wipe it off super carefully and then apply a neutralizing solution. Again, the same thing as what they used to do 
when they were perming your hair. So I looked on Amazon because I know there's a lot of DIY lash lift kits and I was trying to figure out what's in those kits. Like, are their solutions any different? What's in the neutralizing? And I could not find an ingredient list anywhere. I messaged a lot of the sellers and I did not hear back from them. So I don't know. Now, maybe if I ordered the box, then maybe it'll say. So if you guys have any of those and it actually has an ingredient list, I'd be really interested to know, but I didn't want to spend the money. I guess I'm cheap. So drop it in the comment below if, if you've got anything on the ingredient box that says what is in the solution. For one of the products, I actually read through all 71 questions. I read all the answers. I read every single review and I couldn't find out still and this was the most popularly rated product on Amazon so I don't know what's in there but if we're extrapolating from other websites from the beauty the estheticians it's likely some combination of, of a thioglycolic acid and usually a neutralizing solution might have hydrogen peroxide again I don't know for the DIY kits a lot of this stuff is not known so what are the potential complications first that you can get the chemical in your eye and that's always a worry that either the perming solution and the neutralizing solution can seep into your eye. The way that the pads are placed, your lashes are up, but this, there's still open area of your eye and I would be concerned um, about that, of introducing any kind of chemical. Second, the eyelid skin is the thinnest skin in your body. So that makes it super susceptible to allergic reactions. So you could get red blistered skin because of just the solution coming into contact with the eyelid and not even the eye. And third, you can get ulceration or perforation of the cornea and possibly even blindness. Now, is that common? I don't think so. I have not read about it in any of the literature or seen that kind of complication. It's a possibility though, because they are pretty strong, the chemicals, at least from the ones that I could find that they, that they use. But again, not fear mongering, but it's a potential side effect of having the lash lifts. And then one thing that I saw online too is a lot of these beauty websites will say see a professional. And for sure, if you're going to do it, I would go to a professional as opposed to applying any of this yourself. I think that it's it could be a lot more dangerous if you're doing it yourself to get stuff into your eye just because it's harder to do anything on yourself. Even when I'm injecting my own Botox or plugging my own eyelids, it's always harder to do something on yourself. So see a professional, but what is exactly, what does that mean? Uh, how are they trained to do this? So in the state of Hawaii, as far as I know, they have to do a video course and then they take an assessment and then they get their certification. So there's not any in-person skills training with it. As far as I'm aware, this is what my esthetician told me who does this procedure because I asked her when I was about to book the appointment. So she said that you don't have to demonstrate doing it on someone. You're not overseen by anybody else. It's doing the video and taking and answering the questions, the assessment, the quiz. So that's, that's the level of, um, training that goes into it. So just so that you guys are aware, now I know that that's going to be state dependent. Some states might have a lot more strict criteria. So if you are an esthetician and you do this and you've got stricter criteria in your states, I would love to hear from you as well. So please drop that in the comments below. So all of this being said, it looks great. I love the way they look. I saw it on Rachel, my optician, like the minute that I walked in, her lashes were like, Psh, so good. But you just should know that there are some potential, especially if you're a sensitive skin individual like I am, you know, I would really worry because I get very uh, noxious uh, fumes and uh, everything seems to really affect my eyes and the rest of my skin. My eyes usually tear a lot for any kind of obnoxious fumes. So you'd want to know that that's a possibility. If that is fine with you and you're, you know that you've never really had reactions before and you want to continue doing it, that is okay. And whether or not it causes lash breakage in the long term, because of the disulfide bond, I think it's likely that it could. But again, nobody does these studies. I wish they would because it would be really nice to know one way or another, hey, this lash perm is going to cause long term breakage on, on your lashes. But I have not seen that study yet. So I can't say definitively just thinking through the thought process, it might. So as long as you go into it with open eyes, pun intended, make the decision that's right for you. 
Anyway, I hope that answered your questions. I got this question a lot, so I felt the need to go ahead and do a video on it. So I hope it answered everybody's questions. If you have more, please drop them in the comments below. And I will see you guys so soon. Thank you so much for watching. Please like the video, subscribe, and do all of the above. And until next time, mahalo.